On December 24, 1971, a ANSA 508, flying from Lima to the Peruvian city of Pucallpa, Peru, was caught in a thunderstorm front. This flight did not make it out of the bad weather safely. The plane was struck by lightning. This case became one of the most fatal lightning strike incidents in aviation history. The disaster that followed the lightning strike claimed the lives of all passengers and crew members except for one 17-year-old girl who survived the three-kilometer drop. Today, I will tell you how Juliana Kotka managed to survive the plane crash and 11 days of wandering alone in the Amazon jungle. But before I get started, don't forget to subscribe to the Frozen History channel. And by the way, leave a comment and tell me what stories you'd like to hear in future videos. Okay. Let's go to those tragic days. On Christmas Eve 1971, Juliana Kopke, who was only 17 years old at the time, was the sole survivor of LANSA Flight 508, which was traveling from Lima, the capital of Peru, to Panguana. Juliana Kopke had no idea what awaited her on December 24, 1971, when she stepped aboard LANSA Flight 508. The night before, she and her mother were celebrating Juliana's graduation from high school in Lima, Peru. Anxious to get home for Christmas, they booked a LASA flight for December 24. Kopka's father, Hans Wilhelm, convinced his wife to avoid flying this airline because of its bad reputation. Nevertheless, the flight was booked. On Christmas Eve, while mother and daughter waited to board, they found themselves in a bustling airport crowded due to the cancellation of several flights the day before. Writing about her memories of the flight in Reader's Digest in 2013, she recalled that the first half hour went pretty smoothly. Everyone got snacks and relaxed. But then things took a turn for the worse. The plane hit a thunderstorm, and lightning flashed everywhere. Passengers started panicking, screaming, and crying. The plane was tossed around, sandwich trays flying everywhere. Juliana's mom, who was very nervous, tried to calm her down, saying, I hope everything will be okay. Then the scariest part began. A bolt of lightning flashed on the wing of the airplane outside the port hole, and the plane began to die sharply. At this point, Juliana's mom simply told her, It's over now. As the plane began to disintegrate in midair, Juliana Kopke and the seat she was strapped into vomited, and was thrown out of the cabin of the collapsing plane. My mother is no longer by my side, and I am no longer on the airplane. Koki wrote in a memoir titled, When I Fell from the Sky. I am still strapped into my seat, but I am alone. At about 10,000 feet, I am alone, and I'm falling, splitting the sky. Koki says she felt a soothing wind as she fell from dizzying heights toward dense jumble foliage, the greens of which reminded her afterward of cauliflower or broccoli sprouts. Her chair, to which she was still strapped in, spun like a helicopter blade. She suspects that this may have helped slow her fall and that the chair itself must have cushioned the impact. So remember this the next time a flight attendant reminds you to buckle up. Juliana lost consciousness before she hit the jungle, and because of her concussion, she has no memory of the first 24 hours after her fall. She assumes that during this period, she must have woken up and unbuckled her belt, because when she fully regained consciousness, the belt was undone. When she woke up, it was about 9 o'clock a.m. the day after the crash. How is that accurate? Just that her wristwatch was still working by then. It was raining, and the girl was soaked and muddy. To shelter from the rain and somehow pull herself together, she crawled under her row of seats. According to Juliana, she could not feel anything. According to her, she felt like she was wrapped in cotton balls. With great difficulty, she was able to get to her knees, and then everything around her spun and fell into darkness again. It was another day and a half before she could get up and try to walk. Remembering her father's advice, she thought of his wise words, If you ever get lost in the jumble, find water and trace its path. It will lead you to a larger source of water, and quite possibly to human habitation. Juliana immediately realized that she had a serious collarbone fracture, which only by some miracle was not open. She also had a deep wound on her calf, but luckily it wasn't bleeding much due to shock. 
The wound on her arm by this time was already infested with maggots and the girl was afraid that it might lead to amputation of the limb. But at that moment, there was nothing she could do about it. As it turned out later, Julian also suffered a broken tibia, a sprained spine and a torn anterior cruciate ligament. Medic speculated that due to her shock and the effects of adrenaline, she didn't feel her injuries until she was in the hospital. By day 10 of wandering through the jungle, the girl was close to exhaustion. All she had managed to eat during that time was only a bag of candy found at the crash site. So Juliana thought she might starve to death. But finally, she was lucky enough to find a camp set up by local fishermen. She gave herself basic first aid, including dousing her arm with gasoline to expel maggots from the wound. The next day, January 3, 1972, Juliana was finally discovered by three fishermen who found her in the cabin and helped her escape to safety. After the rescue, Juliana learned that she was the only survivor of the LANSA crash. A total of 91 people died in that crash, including her mother Maria. After recovering from her injuries, Coke assisted search parties in locating the crash site and recovering the bodies of victims. Her mother's body was discovered on 12 January 1972. Koch returned to her parents' native Germany, where she fully recovered from her physical injuries. Like her parents, she studied biology at the University of Kiel and graduated in 1980. She received a doctorate from Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich and returned to Peru to conduct research in mammalogy, specializing in bats. In 1989, Koch married Eric Diller, a German entomologist who specializes in parasitic wasps. In 2000, following the death of her father, she took over as the director of Penguana. Even as she has found meaning in her life and her work, the crash and its aftermath have stayed with her over the decades. Of course, I had nightmares for a long time for years, and of course the grief about my mother's death and that of the other people came back again and again. The thought, why was I the only survivor? Haunts me. It always will. Koch's survival has been the subject of numerous books and films, including the low-budget and heavily fictionalized I Miracoli Accadono Ancora, 1974, by Italian filmmaker Giuseppe Maria Scotis, which was released in English as Miracles Still Happen. Koch's story was more faithfully told by Koch herself in German filmmaker Werner Herzog's documentary Wings of Hope, 1998. How did Julianne Koch survive the plane fall? Koch's unlikely survival has been the subject of much speculation. Experts have said that she survived the fall because she was harnessed into her seat, the window seat, which was attached to the two seats to her left as part of a row of three. That was thought to the function as a parachute which slowed her fall. The impact may have also been lessened by the updraft from a thunderstorm Koch fell through as well as the thick foliage at her landing site. What's interesting is that around 14 other passengers also made it through the initial crash. Sadly, their luck ran out while they were waiting to be rescued. It just goes to show how survival in situations like these is a mix of factors that can be pretty unpredictable. By the way, film director Werner Herzog narrowly missed the flight, but a last-minute change of plans made him cancel his reservations. Moved by this fate, he later made the documentary Wings of Hope to tell the amazing story of Julianne Koch's survival. Do you think you could survive what Julianne did? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from my channel Frozen History.